Hello everybody, and welcome to Ancient Architects. Please subscribe now to get the latest ancient history news and independent research from around the world. We've all seen the incredible Moai statues created to honour the ancestors of Easter Island, known locally as Rapa Nui, between 1000 and 1650 AD. There are around 900 statues on the island, some weighing up to 86 tonnes, and some being 10 metres in height. Most are carved from volcanic tuff, which is basically compressed volcanic ash, and compared to volcanic rock like basalt, it is easier to carve with stone tools. Some Moai statues though, only a minority are made of basalt, such as the example on display in the British Museum. Only 13 Moai are made of this harder rock type, and they tend to be the earliest examples. This one is thought to date back to between 1000 and 1200 AD. The Moai were placed on rectangular platforms called Ahu, located along the coast and facing inland, and not looking out to sea, and each Moai is thought to represent a specific person who passed away. They are said to be the living faces of the ancestors. Although the Moai differ from one another, they generally have a heavy eyebrow ridge, elongated ears, and a strong, well-defined jawline. The arms are thin, and they sit tightly against the body, with their hands pointing towards the navel. So, that's some background on the statues themselves, but not everybody knows that the backs of some of the statues are also intricately carved. But these are not considered original features, and experts believe they were added at a later date. Sometimes the motifs are carved in low relief, sometimes incised, but what are these strange images actually showing? The carved images relate to the Birdman cult of Rapa Nui, which developed around 1400 AD. Sometimes the imagery displayed is the same from statue to statue, but the backs can differ in style and detail. All of the imagery is related to the Birdman cult though. This is the back of the Basalt Moai statue in the British Museum, and it's thanks to digital imaging technology, specific work that took place more than 10 years ago, that we now know so much about it. We can see two birdmen carved on the upper back and shoulders. These have the head of a frigate bird, but human hands and feet. The imaging technology showed that one of the birds has a shorter beak, meaning one bird is male and the other is female. In the centre back of the Moai head is a small fledgling bird with an open beak, and this is flanked by carvings of ceremonial dance paddles, also known as Ao, and these have faces carved onto them. On the left ear is another Ao, and running from top to bottom on the right ear are four shapes, like inverted Vs, and these are said to represent the female vulva. As stated, the carvings on the back of the Moai statues are believed to have been added at a later date, because the Birdman cult did not originate until around 1400 AD. But using the imaging technology, we also know that the carvings on the back were not done as part of one specific project. This wasn't one specific planned image, and it wasn't carved at one time. It was added to over hundreds of years, and we know this from looking at the microscopic weathering profiles on the various carvings. The three bands around the waist, the ring above it and the part hanging down are a Rapa Nui symbolic loincloth. This is part of the original Moai design, and the oldest part of the back. After this was done, over time the Moai was half buried. The next phase of carving saw two engraved kamari, or symbols for the vulva, that ran down the back of the head. At a later date still, the male fledgling with an open beak, reaching out of the nest was carved, as well as the two birdmen below. The new design overprinted the older one. The two birdmen are the chick's mum and dad. The female bird is on the right hand side, under the v-shapes on the right ear. The male bird is on the left, and on the left ear we see a dance paddle, and to the Rapa Nui people, this was a symbol of male authority. The digital imaging has also revealed a rounded shape near the bottom of the female birdman, which could be the egg that the fledgling has hatched from. On other Moai statues, the ring above the bands could have doubled up as a bird egg. 
the ascendance of the Birdman cult seems to have come at the expense of traditional ancestor worship and the creation of Moai statues. There was a transition in religion and ritualistic practices from ancestor worship to the Birdman cult and some of the older statues had their backs carved because of it. Volcanic tuff is easily eroded and so many of the carvings on the back of the Moai are hard to make out today. Some of them have completely worn away. But the basalt statue in the British Museum still has the detail. Because, of course, the rock is harder to weather and erode. So, this explains the motifs on the back of the Moai statue in the British Museum. And although, as stated, the motifs do differ from statue to statue, other Moai do show very similar carvings, and the backs of all the Moai statues are believed to be related to the Birdman cult. The Birdman was apparently the emblem of the warrior class, known as Matatoa, and the rise of Birdman imagery at the expense of ancestor worship in making Moai may imply a power struggle and transference on the island. We should also know that the Birdman is not just carved onto the backs of the statues, but they are also found cut into rocks and bedrock outcrops, as well as painted on stone slabs and inside caves. The sacred site of the Birdman cult was Orongo, a narrow ridge where one side is a 1,000 foot drop into the ocean, and on the other side is a deep crater. The main ritual of the cult was the annual egg hunt. The contestants were men of importance on the island. They appointed one or two hopu, aka men of lesser status, who swam to the nearby Motu Nui island to wait for the arrival of the terns and retrieve an egg. The contestants waited at the stone village of Orongo, whilst the Hopu took the dangerous journey on their behalf. Many of them died, drowning, falling off the cliff, eaten by sharks and so on. Once an egg was collected, the finder would go to the highest point on Motu Nui and call out to the shore of the main island, telling his benefactor he had won, by saying, Go shave your head, you have got the egg. The unsuccessful Hopu would swim back to the island, but the successful egg finder would remain on Motu Nui to fast alone before swimming back, carrying the egg in a reed basket that was tied to his head. Then he would climb the steep cliff and present the egg to the winning contestant, who would have a shaved head that was either painted white or red. This contestant would then be declared the Tangata Manu, aka the Birdman, before leading a procession down the hill. He was deemed sacred and was basically given the year off, only eating and sleeping and engaging in no other activity. And I have to admit, that does sound amazing. In Rapa Nui mythology, the chief god of the Birdman cult was called Make Make. There was also another male god, the chief of the eggs and his wife Vihoa, as well as another female god Vikanatia. It is a fascinating religion, but it was suppressed by Christian missionaries in the 1860s, and although we do know about the practices, we still don't know the origins and history of the cult. For example, whether it coexisted with a Moai-based religion or suppressed it. Did the Birdman cult originate on Easter Island, or does it have much older origins, maybe brought to the island from somewhere else? In ancient times, bird gods, goddesses and spirits are found on just about every continent around the world. In South America, India, Egypt, Turkey, Mesopotamia and so on. So, is there a link back in time? In truth, due to the suppression of the indigenous people and their traditions, we'll probably never know for sure. I do find the history, mythology and mystery of Easter Island totally fascinating. It's a wondrous remote location in the southeastern Pacific Ocean, and it continues to captivate the human imagination. And if ever there was one, it's certainly a bucket list location. Thank you very much for watching this episode of Ancient Architects. If you enjoyed the video, please subscribe to the channel, please like the video, and please leave a comment below. Thank you very much.